Hi guys, welcome back. So I've got another tutorial for you today where we're going to be looking at linear interpolation. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a mathematic function we can use just to make um, our animations more smooth. Okay, so you'll see here I have a canvas and we have a ball which follows my mouth, mouse movements. And you'll notice the movement isn't exactly linear with my mouse. Okay, you see, you notice there's a slight delayed effect and that's what this linear interpolation is doing. Okay, so we can slow it down for example. You'll see at the moment we're just um, interpolating by 10% here. If we change that to 1%, you'll notice the movement's now a lot slower, okay? And likewise, we can speed up. We can add whatever kind of ease uh, argument we want there, really. So this is also, this technique's also used fairly often with uh, kind of like smooth scrolling or any kind of other animations uh, on modern websites. I've got an example here. So you'll see when we scroll, we kind of get that delayed. Even though we've um, stopped scrolling, the uh, animation still continues after, and that's because of this lerp function, okay? So we get a nice skewed animation, okay? And that's all done with linear interpolation. So yeah, let's just jump straight into the video, guys. Thanks. Okay, guys, so let's get started with this. Obviously, just got the three usual files, index.html, style.css, snap.js. Um, you can see here, just basic HTML layout. And in the body, we just added a canvas with an ID of canvas. And then we've added a script with a, uh, just linking to our app.js file, okay? And then I've also added just some basic styling in the uh, head section, linking to this style.css file, where you can see all I've done is just remove the default margins and paddings, okay? So we're setting the margin to zero, padding to zero, and box size in border box. Um, so now I've got this open in live server. You can see here this uh, lerp page here. So what we're going to do now is just um, get the canvas set up. So we'll say let canvas in our JavaScript file equal document.querySelector. And now we do get element by ID, sorry. Like so, and then we'll just uh, say canvas in there. Next we need to do is set the context of the canvas. This is just obviously going to be a 2D kind of basic animation. So we'll just say let ctx for context equal canvas dot get context. And here we'll just say uh, 2D, like so, okay? And then the next we wanna do is uh, get the width of our inner window, okay? Because we're going to apply the width size to our canvas as well. So we'll just create a variable first called width, say let width here, and then we'll just set that to uh, window dot inner width, okay? So now you'll see if I console dot log uh, width, like so, if we open up our Console, you can see if I reload the page, it'll be uh, this this width here is 379 pixels. If I make it slightly larger, refresh, you can see it's now 701 pixels, okay? So it always gets the width of the uh, window. Uh, we'll do the same thing for the height as well. So we'll say let height equal window dot inner height. Like so. Okay, and then kind of underneath that, the next thing we want to do here is I'm just going to set the canvas width to this width as well. So what we can do here is say uh, canvas.width and then equals. So what we're doing is saying let the width equal to canvas.width, which both are equal to the window.inner width. Okay, and then we can do the same with the canvas.height as well. So say canvas.height, like so. Okay, so now you'll see if we come to our elements section, and then if we select our canvas, you can see it now fills the screen, okay, to the appropriate window width and the uh, height as well. Okay, so now come underneath this, next thing I want to do here is we're going to create um, four more variables here, okay? So we're going to set an X variable and a ball X variable. So say let X equal, and we'll start off the x on the x-axis initially at the um, halfway on the page, okay? So in order to do that, obviously uh, the x is looking at the width horizontally, okay? So we'll just say width divided by two, like so. And then we'll say let y equals height divided by two, okay? And then the next thing we want to do here is for now, I'm just gonna create two more variables. We'll say let ball x equal, we'll set it at x for now as the x variable we just created. 
And what this ball X variable does is it's just going to be where our ball is going to be placed on the canvas on the X axis, okay? So we'll do the same for the ball Y, say ball Y equals, and here we just say Y, like so. Okay, now I come underneath this, the next one I do here is just add an event listener, okay? We're going to list, so we're going to say document um, dot, well no, we'll say window, we'll say window dot add event listener. And we'll listen for a mouse move, okay? So when we move our mouse, and here we'll just pass in the event, and then we'll say um, uh, x equals e dot client x, and y equals e dot client y, okay? So now if we console dot log x and y, you'll see if we come to our console now, we get the um, x and y coordinates logged in our console when we move our mouse, okay, like so. Okay, so that's picking that up. And what we're doing as we move our mouse, we're setting the x and y variables we created in the global scope to our mouse coordinates, okay? So now it's done, we can move on to the move ball function. So we're gonna paint the ball to the canvas and move it with our mouse, okay? So we'll say function, um, move ball, and here we'll just say, first thing we wanna do with the canvas is just, um, uh, we're gonna create the ball, okay? So we, we'll just say ctx.fill style, and that's going to equal black. We're gonna have a black ball, okay? So we're gonna fill it with a black solid color. And then underneath that, we're going to say um, ball x equals, actually, let me just come underneath that. We'll say ctx.begin path next. Okay, and this starts the drawing path or starts our drawing on the canvas, okay? And then underneath that, we'll just say, we're gonna create a circle. So in order to that, there's a function called arc. So ctx.arc. And here we can just say uh, ball x, so you see here, we want it, we start the arc when it, it takes in the x-axis amount for the first argument. So we'll just say ball x here. Next is the y-axis. We want to place it, place the ball. So let's just say ball y here. And then the radius. So here, I'll just set the radius to 50 pixels. And then angle. So I'm just gonna leave this at zero. And then uh, the end angle. So here we can just say, um, I wanna say two times Math dot pi. Okay, like so. And then underneath that, I'm just going to say ctx dot fill, like so. And then that should be it for now. If we just call this function, it should draw the ball onto the canvas. So you can see there's our ball there. Okay. So now what we want to do, we want to, we want to move this ball on the canvas with our mouse move, okay? So in order to do that, the first we need to do is we can to say, if we just set this to X for now, so that's Y, and then we need to reanimate this, okay? So I'm just going to say up here, ctx.clearRect. And here, this takes in zero. So what this is doing, this is just wiping the uh, canvas clean, okay? Because we're gonna be uh, reanimating this over and over again using the request animation frame function. So before we, we do any painting, we need to clear it first to, to be able to animate, okay? So we're passing X and Y, so we start at zero, zero, and then we're basically cleaning the whole canvas. So we're just going to say the width, the width variable, and we're passing the height variable we created, okay? Um, and then next thing we want to do is kind of underneath here, we're just going to say request animation frame, and then we're just going to call that move ball function over and over again within itself. Okay, so now you can see our ball moves along with our mouse. Okay, um, so this is all well and good, but we can make this look a lot smoother. Okay, we're going to introduce a linear interpolation just to make give this a nice kind of smooth effect. Okay. You, it's, it's a technique used in a lot of animation, uh, smooth scrolling, which I'm gonna be showing in a future video. Okay, but for now, let's just show you just the basics of how this uh, linear interpolation works, okay? So you can see here, I found this uh, kind of blog post from uh, Matt Deloria. He's a really uh, cool guy, does loads of generative art um, tutorials online. 
But um, you can see here he's, he's mentioned this linear interpolation. Um, it's a handy function for creative coding, game development. Um, it just interpolates within a given range. So we have a start and an end. And then we have like a, a T variable or a, um, an ease variable, which is basically a percentage. Okay. And what happens is this function, it, it calculates the distance between the start and the end or the target. And it will, um, the percentage of it, and it will animate, um, it will work, calculate the uh, percentage between the start and the end and animate it, to animate the element um, to be in that position. Okay. So let's show you what I mean. So if we, we're going to use this, we'll copy this function here over. Okay, so this function lerp. Lerp is short for linear interpolation. Um, I'll just put it up here for now. Okay, so if I show you what this does, if we um, just say console.log lerp, and here we can just add any random numbers. So say if we wanted to work out, what, you know, the halfway between 10 and 20. So if we say the start is 10, Halfway, uh, the end is 20, that's the target. And then if we put the percentage in here, so we'll say 0.5%, okay? So what this should be, obviously halfway between 10 and 20 is 15. So if you come to our console, you can see we get 15 to the console there. Same if we, for example, if we had, you know, 0 to 100, and then obviously halfway between that is 50. If we set it to 20%, that would be 20, like so. You can see that's like in the terminal there, okay? So you can see how this percentage is being worked out. And obviously if we put that into an animation, we'll get a nice kind of smooth in a smooth effect, okay? So let's um, implement this lerp function into our animation, okay? At the moment you'll see, obviously we've got this linear movement with our mouse. So let's just say here, um, underneath this, I'm going to say ball x equals, and we're going to use this lerp function, okay? And then we're going to pass in the ball x variable first. That'll be the start. And then obviously we want our current mouse position as the target. So here we'll just say x. And then I'm just going to give this, uh, we'll give it an ease of 10%, okay? So just say 0 0.1 for now. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with our ball y variable. So say ball y equals lerp. And here we're just going to say ball y this time for the uh, start point. And then obviously the new, the uh, end or the target point will be our uh, Y variable where our mouse is. And then again, I'm gonna set the ease to 10%. Okay, so now if we use these this ball X and ball Y variable instead, we'll say ball Y, a ball X, sorry, and ball Y for the second argument. You should see we now get a nice smoother effect. And you can see we get that kind of, it's not linear. You can see it gradually slows down towards the end, okay? And we can slow this down. So for example, if I put 0 0.01, the animation will be a lot slower. You can see, and as it moves close to the mouse, it slows down as the percentage, the 10% gets smaller and smaller, okay? So that's just the basics of this kind of um, linear interpolation functionality. You can see how useful this can be. Um, I'm using it quite a lot at the moment when I'm doing, trying to implement smooth scrolling into the uh, websites I'm creating. So I'll be showing you that in the, in the next, in the future video, as I said. But yeah, this is for now, guys. This is the basics of linear interpolation and how you can use it to create um, some interesting, you know, smooth, smooth effects with animations on your page. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.